Okay, uh, I thought I would talk today about power series. Series, these are powers of x. I'm going to keep going. All powers, all those x to the fourth, x to the fifth, they'll all come in too. And uh, my idea is combine them, add them up to get uh, a function of x. So we're doing calculus, but a new part of it with these uh, infinite series. So what do I mean by combine them? I mean I'll multiply those powers by some numbers. Let me call those numbers A0. Maybe this, so the first guy will be an A0. And then I'll add on an A1x, some amount of x. I'll add on some A2x squared, some A3x cubed, and onwards. So now I have a function. And that function I'll let me call it f of x. So here's my starting plan here. I'm going to take, well we've seen this for e to the x. Let me remember how uh, e to the x could come, the series for that particular function. So here's the plan. I'm going to choose those a's so as to match, let me put these words down, I'll match at x equals zero the function, its derivative, its next derivative, its third derivative, and onwards. Each a, like a3, will be chosen so that that right-hand side has the correct derivative, third derivative, at x equals zero. So this is this Taylor series, Taylor's name is, is, is associated with series like this, and I'm focusing on my, everything's happening at x equals zero. Okay, so in the case of e to the x, all its derivatives were the same, still e to the x, and they all equal 1 at x equals 0. So I want that function to give me 1 for every derivative. That doesn't mean that the a's should all be 1. Why not? Because when I take the derivative, for example, of this guy, that x cubed, the first derivative will be 3x squared, the next derivative 6x, the next derivative 6, that's the one I want that third derivative, but it'll be 6, so I'll, a3 will have to be 1 over 6 to give me the correct answer, 1. Let me write those things down. I want, so, so what we just did is the derivative of x to the nth, the nth derivative. What's the nth derivative of x to the n? That's the, we get to use our nice formula for derivatives. So the first derivative is n x to the n minus 1. The derivative of that will be n times n minus 1 x to 1 lower power. Da, da, da. Keep going. Do it n times and what have you got? You finally got down to the zeroth power of x, a constant. But what is that constant? It's n times n minus 1 so that nth derivative will be n from the first, n minus 1 from the second, keep multiplying until you finally get down to 1, and of course that's called, because it comes up often enough to have its own special name, that name is n factorial, and it's written n with an exclamation mark. So that's n factorial, and that's the nth derivative of x to the n. So for the particular function e to the x, if I worked out its series, I'm trying to, all the derivatives I'm trying to get are all ones, but what, what the powers of x give me these n factorials, so I better, d the a's had better divide by the n factorial. So let me recall the series for e to the x and then go on to new 
functions. That's the point of my lecture. So we're getting e to the x in a slightly different way from the original way, but it, this is a good way. e to the x at x equals 0 is 1 at the first derivative of e to the x is 1. So I divide by 1 factorial, that's 1. But here I have to divide by 2 because the second derivative is 2 and I want those to cancel. And here I divide by, what do I divide by? 6 because the third derivative is 6. And a typical term is I have to divide by n factorial because when I take n derivatives, I get n factorial, right? The nth derivative of that thing we just worked out is n factorial. So I divide by n factorial and I've got the derivative to come out 1. And that's correct for e to the x. So that's the plan, matching derivatives at x equals 0 by each power of, of x, and now I'm ready for a new function. And a nice choice is sine x. So now on this board, if I can come here, I'm going to take a different function, no longer e to the x. My function is going to be sine x. Well, I better figure out all its derivatives. And they're nice, of course. Sine x, its derivative, can I just list them all? These are the things that I have to match. I'll plug in x equals zero, but let me first find the derivatives. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is minus the sine. The derivative of minus the sine is minus the cosine. And then I'm back to sine again and repeating forever. So those, that's a list of the derivatives of sine x. This is my f of x here. This guy, first one. Okay, now I plug in x equals 0 because I want all the derivatives at 0. Those, the whole series is being built focused on that point x equals 0. So at x equals 0, that's easy to plug in. The sine is 0, the cosine is 1, the minus the sine is 0, minus the cosine is minus 1, the sine is 0, and repeat. 0, 1, 0, minus 1, forever. Okay, so I know the derivatives that I have to match. Now can I construct the power series that matches them? Okay, so that power series will give me sine x, and what will it have? It starts with 0. The constant term is 0 because the sine of 0, when x is 0, of course, we want to get the answer 0. Then the next term, the, the x, has, its coefficient is 1. 1x. No x squared in sine x. No x squared. But now minus, do I have minus 1x cubes? Not quite minus x cubed, but I have to divide by 6 because when I take that der three derivatives, it'll produce 6. So I have to divide by 6, which is 3 factorial. That's really the number that's there. 3 times 2 times 1, 6. And now the fourth degree term, the x to the fourth is not there x to the fifth is going to come in with a plus. So there's a plus from this guy. This is x, x to the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? x to the fifth, and now what do I divide by now? 5 factorial. 120. And then minus, and so on. Minus an x to the seventh over 7 factorial. We have created the power series the, around zero, focused on zero, and let me remove that one because it's just a waste of space, x minus x cubed, all odd powers, and that's because sine x is an odd function. If I change from x to minus x, 
everything will change sign. Uh, I guess if I, what would happen if I plugged in x equal pi? Suppose I took x equal pi in this formula for sine x. This infinite formula keeps going forever. Da da da. Well, I would get pi minus pi cubed over six plus pi to the fifth over 120. It would look ridiculous, but you and I know that the answer would have to come out. The correct sine of pi, zero. I, I don't plan to do it, but it has to work. Okay, so that's the sine. That's the sine. And it's an odd series. Now, okay, good example. No, there's a, its twin has got to show up here. The cosine. What's the series for the cosine? These are the two series that are worth knowing. You notice here that uh, slope of 1, the big deal about the slope of sine x at x equals 0. The slope is 1, and that does have a slope of 1. Okay, what about the cosine? Well, now I have to plug in. All right, the cosine is going to start here, cosine minus sine minus cosine, but I, now my f of x is going to be cosine x. And I need its derivatives. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to have three lines again that are going to look just like these three lines. But they'll be for the cosine. So that I start with the cosine. Its derivative is minus the sine. Its derivative is minus the cosine. Its derivative is what? Plus sine. And then cosine and forever minus the sine, and let me plug in now at x equals zero. This is our system. Find the derivatives, plug in zero, so find the derivatives at zero. Well, the function itself, the zeroth derivative, is one. The first derivative is zero. The second derivative is minus 1. The thir third is 0. The fourth derivative is plus 1, 0, and so on. It's that same line as we have, but just starting over by 1, starting with the cosine. All right. I know what derivatives I want. Now I just have to make a, create my series for cosine x which matches these numbers. Okay, one, this is one more time. Just match those numbers with the, with the coefficients that I originally called a0, a1, a2, a3, uh, but now we have numbers. Okay, at x equals zero. So how does this series start? At x equals zero, the cosine of zero is one. It starts with a one. That's the constant term sitting there. There is no the, the coefficient of x, the linear term, is zero this, because the cosine has zero slope at, at the start. Then we come to something that shows up, minus, this will be, now what are we into? This is the constant, the first power is gone, the second power minus x squared, but you know if I'm looking to match the second derivative, to make it be minus 1, right now it's minus 2. This, if differentiating would give me a 2x and a 2. So I have to divide by that 2 or 2 factorial. Now it's good. Now it matches the correct second derivative, minus 1. Then there's no third derivative. The fourth derivative is plus 1, x to the fourth over 4 factorial and then minus and so on, x to the 6 over 6 factorial, all even powers. So this is an even powers, the zeroth, second, fourth, sixth power. So it's an even function. That means that the cosine of minus x is exactly the same as the cosine of x. It's, uh, we get a nice, 
a little insight on these special, two special groups for which the sine is the perfect example of an odd function and the cosine is the perfect example of an even function. Uh, but, uh, well, there's so much here. Um, what happens, what happens if I uh, cut the series off? I, I just want to look at those first terms to see exactly what they represent. Suppose I stop here after the linear term. What do I have? What is that x by, just by itself? Well, it's really zero plus x because there was a zero from the constant term. That is the linear approximation. That is the, gives me the equation of the tangent line, y equal x, slope one. More interesting, cut this one off. Cut this one off here. That's a very important estimate. It's not the exact cosine because the exact cosine's got all these later guys. But don't forget, and I should have said this from the very beginning, these n factorials grow fast. And all the series that we're talking about, because those n factorials grow so fast and I'm dividing by them, I can take any x and I get a reasonable number. If I take x equal pi, that's this uh, sine series gave me zero. What do I get if I plug in x equal pi in the cosine series? Huh. So the cosine series, if I plugged in x equal pi and had patience to go pretty far, my numbers would be getting near the cosine of pi, which would be minus one. Oh, I don't see minus one coming out of Here's one minus a half of pi squared. That's, I don't know, that's around half pi squared. Might be around five or something. Uh, but they knock each other off. They get very small and we get the answer minus one. Okay, so those are two important series. And now I get to tell you about Euler's great formula. Euler's great formula. It connects these three series that you've seen. But to make that connection, I have to bring in the imaginary number i. Is that okay? Just imagine a number i. Okay. And everybody knows what you're supposed to imagine. You're supposed to imagine that i squared is minus 1. And we all know there is no such, there is no real number. The square of a real number is always going to be greater or equal zero. So let's just create a symbol i for the, with the, with, with the rule, with the understanding that any time we see i squared, I'm entitled to write minus one. Okay. So now what is Euler's great formula? Okay. Euler's great formula, his brilliant insight was, look at, make x in this e to the x series, make x imaginary. Change x to ix, so it make it an imaginary number. So let, let me, can I just take Euler's, take Taylor's series or, oh, maybe Euler thought of this too because he, he, that letter e is his initial, probably he did. So this is, that's, I guess that's why he found this lovely connection. So if I take e to the ix and I, instead of x in this series, I put in ix, just go for it. Let x be imaginary. Okay, I'll, can I write out the series? One plus, instead of x, I have ix and then I have one over two factorial i x squared, and then I have one over three factorial i x cubes, and one over four factorial i x to the fourth. That's e to the i x. Okay, you say. 
you just changed x to ix. That's all I did. Now, here's the point. Now I'm going to look at this mess and I'm going to separate out the part that is real from the part that's imaginary. I'm going to separate it into its real part and its imaginary part. So what is real in this thing? Okay, I see one is certainly a real number. Do you see the other one, the next one that's real? It comes from this I squared. That I squared I can replace by minus one, perfectly real. So it's minus, from the I squared, one over two factorial X squared is still there. The I squared was minus one, that's all. And then would come, an, uh, 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 would come something from the I to the fourth. Because what is I to the fourth? It's I squared squared, minus one squared, we'd be back to plus one. So plus sign. Good. Now comes the part that has an I in it and a single I I can't, I have to live with. So that I is multiplied by X. Now I have I cubed. How do I deal with I cubed? I cubed is I squared minus one times I. I squared times I is minus I. So I have a minus I, one over three factorial and the X cubed and so on. Do you see what we have? Do you see what this real part of E to the I X is? It's the cosine. Right there, same thing. So I'm getting cosine X for the real part and then I times this series. And you can see what that series is. It's the sine series. X minus one six X cubed plus one twentieth of X to the fifth sine X. There is Euler's great formula that E to the I X Oh, I better write it on a fresh board. Maybe I'll just write it over here. I'm going to copy from this board my Euler's great formula that e to the i x comes out to have the real part cos x, imaginary part gives me the i sine x, and I'll write that down. Now let me work here. e to the i x is cos x plus i sine x. And I want to draw a picture. Okay, here's a picture. Here's a picture. Actually, you, Euler often wrote his formula, or we, would, we often write his formula, because we're taking cosines and sines. Somehow x isn't such a, those are angles. So it's more natural to write, now that we're showing up with sines and cosines, it's more natural to write something, a symbol that we think of as an angle like theta. So you would more often see it this way. All I did, I'm just changing letters from x to theta as a way of remembering that it's an angle. And now I'll draw it. So here's the, I have to draw that thing. Okay, this is the real direction and that's the imaginary direction. And I just go, that's the real part, I go cos theta across here, so let that be cos theta. And then I go upwards in the imaginary, up or down. So across is the real part, up down is the imaginary part. Say sine theta, I go up to that height is sine theta and that angle is theta. Fantastic. That's a picture of Euler's formula. If the, well, Euler, that's, that's the best way to see it is that, that beautiful statement and this is a picture to remind us. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, 
that's the complex, we would say that's the complex plane because it's got a, points have two parts, a real part and an imaginary part. Nothing so complex about that. Now, before I stop, we've done three important series. Can I mention two more, just two more out of a long list of possibilities. One is the most important series of all where the coefficients are all ones. So the coefficients are all ones. That's called the geometric series. Let me write its name here. So that's a, that's a Taylor series, that's a power series. And the function it comes from happens to be 1 over 1 minus x. That's the function. And you'll see why. If you multiply both sides by 1 minus x, I'll get 1 here and you would, if you watch, everything will cancel except the 1. So that's it. Now, there's a significant difference between that series and e to the x. The biggest difference is we're not dividing by n factorial anymore. And as a result, we, these terms don't get necessarily smaller and smaller and smaller unless x is below 1. So we're okay for x below 1. And it, x could be negative. I, I can even say absolute value of x below 1. Then these terms get smaller. But at x equal 1, we're dead. At x equal 1, I have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, all 1's. I'm getting infinity. And on the left side, I'm getting infinity also. At x equal 1, blows up. Okay, one more series and we're done. One more. It, it's a neat one because it brings in the logarithm. Okay, how am I going to get it? I'm going to start with this series, which is the most, the big one, the geometric series, and I'm going to take the integral of every term. So if I integrate 1, I get x. If I integrate x, I get x squared over 2. If I integrate x squared, I get x cubed over 3, x fourth over 4, and so on. Not 3 factorial, just 3. And if I integrate this, well, let me put the answer down and then we can remember, we can take its derivative and say, yep, it does give that. So the answer is minus, this minus sign shows up here as a minus the logarithm of 1 minus x. Because if I take the derivative of that, the logarithm always puts this inside function down at the bottom, and then the derivative of the inside function, the chain rule, brings out a minus 1 and the minus 1's go away and beautiful. So just have a look at that series then for the logarithm. The logarithm of 1 minus x. Again, we're matching at x equals 0. At x equals 0, this function is okay. In fact, at x equals 0, what is that function? Logarithm of 1, which is 0, and there's no constant term. Good. Okay, what comments to make about this Final example. This one was okay for x smaller than 1, but then it died at x equal 1. This one, well, it, it's getting a little help dividing by 3 and 4 and 5, but that's puny help. That's no way compared to dividing by 3 factorial, 4 factorial, and so on, which really helps. So actually, this series is also only okay out to x equal 1, but not it, at, at, at x equal 1, it fails again. At x equal 1, I have the log, what do I have? When x is 1, I have the log of 0. Minus infinity, and the minus I have, I've got infinity at x equal 1. At x equal 1, this is 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth. Getting smaller but not very fast and adding up to infinity. 
So there's a whole discussion we could spend hours on this, that famous series, one plus a half plus a third plus a quarter and other series of numbers. I wanted to do calculus, derivatives, integrals. So I took functions and series of powers, not series of numbers, to illustrate this. Okay, good. Thanks. This has been a production of MIT OpenCourseWare and Gilbert Strang. Funding for this video was provided by the Lord Foundation. To help OCW continue to provide free and open access to MIT courses, please make a donation at ocw.mit.edu donate.